Let's start with linear trend models. A linear trend model is the simplest possible trend model. Here the independent variable is time and the dependent variable changes at a constant rate with time. So let's say that we have a particular variable y and these are values of y. So we regress y against time and we get this line. This is linear regression. So we have a straight line and the form of the line is shown over here. Y is equal to B0. B0 is the intercept term. So the Y axis intercept is B0. And then B1 is the slope. And then T is the independent variable. Any particular value of Y will be based on this equation and then an error term. So this is the error term here. This is this error term. This is the error term over here. So any particular value of Y will be based on this equation, which should look familiar. Now, how do we use this line to come up with a predicted value of Y given a particular value of T? Remember, T here is the independent variable. So the predicted value of Y will be equal to the estimated B0 value plus the estimated B1 value times T. Now, these are estimated values based on the regression that we run. If we have this simple example where B0 is 0 0.5 and B1 is 0 0.7, our equation becomes estimated value of Y is equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.7 times t, and if t is 10, we simply have 10 over here. So the estimated value of y, which is actually a point on this straight line, will be 0.5 plus 7, which is 7.5. Now, if you have time, you can work through example 1, which illustrates the same concept using some real data. Sometimes a linear trend does not correctly model the growth of a time series. And this issue is quite common with time series data because when we look at time series data such as sales, sales typically grow at a particular rate. When we have growth at a particular rate, then we say that our growth is exponential. With exponential growth, it makes more sense to use a log linear trend model. And here is what a log linear trend model looks like. So with log linear trend models, the y-axis will be the natural log of some variable. If our variable is y, then we say natural log of y and the x-axis would be time. So you might wonder where this is coming from. When we have exponential growth, we basically say that y is equal to e to the power of b0 plus b1t. So exponential growth in y with respect to variable t is represented like this. Now, using your basic high school maths, you can say that the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of e to the power of b0 plus b1t. And then this on the right becomes b0 plus b1t multiplied by the natural log of e. You might recall from high school maths that when you have this sort of an expression, the exponent can be brought over here, which is what I have done. And then you might also recall that the natural log of E is equal to 1. So we can cancel this. And what we are left with is natural log of Y is equal to B0 plus B1T. And that is what we have over here. You don't really need to know this derivation. I've just given it to you for your benefit. What you do need to remember is that with log linear trend models, the y-axis is the natural log of a variable and on the x-axis, we just have regular time. Let's look at another simple example. We now have a log linear trend model. The value of B0 and B1 is given. What is the predicted value of y when t is equal to 10? So we can say that the natural log of y when t is equal to 10 is b0, which is 0 0.5, plus b1, which is 0 0.7 times t, which is 10. So the natural log of y is equal to 0 0.5 plus 7, which is 7.5. And then 
Why, when t is equal to 10, is equal to e to the power of 7.5, which is 1808. So this illustrates how we can use log linear trend models. Now, if you have time, you can work through example 3. The trend models that we are talking about are regression models and therefore regression model assumptions must be satisfied. But the challenge is that when working with these models, error term correlation is often an issue. In other words, the error terms are correlated with each other, which means that we have serial correlation or autocorrelation and that is a problem. So how do we test for this? One way is to simply look at the plot. So if we have a plot that's something like this, clearly we have a correlation between error terms. Another scenario might be like this, where growth is exponential, and then we have a trend line which is somewhat like this. So here again, notice that we have a correlation issue. So we can look at the plot and identify a possible issue. The more formal method for testing for correlated errors or testing for serial correlation is to use the Durbin-Watson test. We talked about the Durbin-Watson test in the previous reading and that's exactly what we are using over here. If you look at examples 1, 2 and 3, along with other regression statistics, the DW stat is also being reported. And you will notice that the DW stat is relatively low. So how do we interpret that? Going back to what we did in the previous reading, the DW stat ranges between 0 and 4. If the DW stat is around 2, that means that there is no serial correlation, or in other words, the error terms are not correlated. If the DW stat is in this region, so closer to 0, then that means that we do have positive serial correlation. And if the DW stat is in this region closer to 4, then we have negative serial correlation. So what if the DW stat is 0 0.3? Do we have positive serial correlation or not? The answer is that we compare this 0 0.3 with a critical value. And in fact, with the DW stat, we have two critical values, a DU and a DL. The DU is the lower limit and DL is the upper limit. Let's say that DU is 1.6 and DL is 1.8. If our Durbin-Watson stat is less than 1.6, that means that we do have positive serial correlation. If we run another regression and there the DW stat, let's say, is 1.9, so that 1.9 is to the right of DL, then we can say that we do not have serial correlation because this 1.9 number is close enough to 2. If our DW stat is somewhere in between, let's say it is 1.7, then the evidence is inconclusive. But as I said before, if you look at examples 1, 2, and 3, the DW stat is in this region, which means that for all the regressions that we've run so far in this section, we do have a serial correlation issue. And how do we deal with serial correlation? This is something we'll be discussing later in this reading.